If you've never heard of the Eight Princes era of Chinese history, you're not alone. It's a very weird choice for a video game, where everyone dies horribly in the end. So here's a complete and accurate history of the era to fill you in. Boom. Mostly. At the end of the War of the Three Kingdoms, Sima Yi led a coup against the rulers of the state of Cao Wei, and his grandson, Sima Yin, finally united China and ended the era of bloodshed in AD 266, Yay! founding the Jin Dynasty. Fast forward 30 years, and Sima Yin, now calling himself Emperor Wu of Jin, spends all his time wandering around an imperial palace stuffed so full of concubines that he has to let a specially trained goat help him pick who he'll sleep with next. And while he gets his imperial shag on, his father-in-law, Yang Jun, is left to run the country. But with the emperor close to death from what I can only assume is overexertion and dehydration, and a palace full of imperial princes biting at the bit to take over on his death, Emperor Wu names his firstborn son as his heir. There's just one problem with that. This is the same guy who once asked if the frogs croak because the government orders them to. So he names Yang Jun and his uncle Sima Liang, the all-around loved and respected ruler of Runan as co-regents for his son. Yang Jun realized his only chance to stay in power was to clean house, so he sends the imperial princes to positions across the empire. And when the emperor dies, Yang Jun becomes the sole regent for the new Emperor Huai. Cue the rebellion of the eight princes. Liang immediately swooped back in, bringing Prince Wei, the hot-headed Prince of Chu, with him. And the two convince the new empress, Jia Nanfang, to overthrow the regent Yang Jun. Seeing an opportunity to extend her control from the bedroom to the empire, Nan Feng agreed. And in AD 291, Prince Wei entered the city and kills Yang Jun, while 3,000 members of the Yang clan are executed. And just like that, the Sima clan are back in charge again. Liang is made regent, and everyone named Sima rejoices. Yay! But in this video, every prince dies, so let's keep going. Liang immediately begins prodding Prince Wei to go back home again and leave him in control. Realizing Liang wasn't going to share his newfound power, Wei and Empress Nan Feng order him to be executed. Though everyone liked Liang so much, no one would do it, and he sweated in a caged wagon for days until Wei finally offered their weight in silk to anyone who would do the deed. <laughs> Wei then made to fill the power gap, only to find Empress Nan Feng was going to have none of it, and she let it leak to the Imperial Army that Wei was the one who ordered the beloved Prince Liang's execution. They deserted Wei and made sure his head deserted his body shortly after. Nine years then pass with the Iron Lady Nan Feng in charge, marked by peace, prosperity, and lots of grumbling that she was a sexual deviant because no one could fault her on actual politics. Empress Nan Feng was nothing if not ruthless and made a point of controlling the emperor by any means necessary, wink wink nudge nudge, even murdering any concubine who became pregnant by her husband to ensure she had no competition. But she missed one of them, and by AD 300, the Emperor's son, by a consort, was coming of age, and this spelled trouble for Empress Yan Fang. Sima Lun, the lying and greedy Prince of Zhao, was the boy's tutor and a part of Empress Nan Fang's inner circle, but he had his own imperial aspirations, so he encouraged Empress Nan Fang to murder the prince, knowing full well that the Emperor would seek revenge on anyone who harmed his son. And when Nan Feng had the prince assassinated, Loon had her arrested as a traitor, then forced her to commit suicide by drinking wine laced with gold. <laughs> Loon then put Emperor Hue under house arrest and crowned himself as emperor. But that's not quite how that's supposed to work, and the other princes again rose up to oppose him. <laughs> Zhong, the arrogant prince of Qi. Ying, the beautiful but dense prince of Chengdu. And I, the actually not that bad Prince of Changsha. Together, they gathered over 200,000 soldiers to put Emperor Hue back on the throne. Yong, the scheming Prince of Chang'an, saw an opportunity to climb the power ladder and moved initially to back the new Emperor Lun. But when he saw how huge the rebel army arrayed against them was, he bravely switched sides. And after a reign of only three months, Lun was forced to commit suicide. <laughs> Emperor Hue was reinstated with Prince Zhong as the new regent, and everyone named Sima goes home happy again. Yay! 
The next year, in AD 302, the last of Sima Yi's lineage died out, throwing the line of secession into confusion as Emperor Hue didn't have a son. Zhang, realizing he was poised to become the next emperor, became an insufferable, arrogant, controlling jerk, and began publicly disrespecting Emperor Hue. Cue the infighting. Still suspicious of Prince Yong since he switched sides at the 11th hour, Prince Zhang had kept a close eye on him, but Yong decided to use this against him and claimed that Prince Zhang was conspiring to kill him and take over the empire, and Prince Yong and Prince Ying used this as an excuse to attack the capital with 100,000 troops. When news of the revolt reached Zhang, the guy sitting right next to him, Prince Ai, was said to be involved in the treachery as well. So Ai fled to the imperial palace and captured the emperor using him as a human body shield, where he and the Imperial Guard held off the forces of Zhang in the middle of the city for three days, while outside, the city was surrounded by Yang and Ying. Seeing the writing on the wall, Zhang's own officers betrayed him, stabbing him in the back just to stop the fighting. <laughs> Sima Yi became the new regent, and to reduce opposition, he deferred all important matters of state to his brother Sima Ying. But as regent, Ai got off to a rough start, as barbarians dressed in red caps and fake beards began attacking Ying. Wanting to help, Prince Ai asked Yong to go fight them, but Yong refused, revealing that he had wanted to become emperor, and it turns out Zhang was right all along to suspect him. The whole thing had been a ruse for Yong to seize power, but Prince Ying didn't know any of that, and Yong played him like a fiddle yet again. So when Yong launched a surprise attack on the capital and Prince Ai with his merciless general Zhang Fang, Ying joined in, thinking Ai had hung him out to dry with the rebels. But were unable to beat him despite overwhelming forces. Unable to agree to a peace treaty, the two packed up to head home when the Minister of Works, Yue, the shrewd prince of Donghai, arrested Prince Ai and delivered him into their hands. Convinced that Ai could never win the war, Yue figured the best thing for the citizens of Luoyang would be to end it quickly. But if he expected mercy for Ai, he was mistaken. Furious at being humiliated by his brother, Ying handed him over to General Zhang Fang, who burned him alive. and then seized 100,000 slaves in Luoyang to be butchered and fed to his starving men. Nobody rejoiced this time. No. And by April of 8304, Ying got exactly what he wanted when he deposed the Empress and her heir, Sima Tan, and named himself Crown Prince. Realizing that he may in fact have backed the evil horse, Yue rebelled in Luoyang and restored the Empress. With 100,000 men, Yue marched south to take Ying's capital back for justice, but he was soundly defeated at the Battle of Dang Yen because good doesn't mean you're going to win, and he was forced to flee to the mountains. With growing unrest in the north and south against Ying, Yang used this opportunity to take control of the emperor and moved him from Luoyang to Chang'an and then declared himself the new crown prince and imprisoned Ying. But Yang's success was short-lived and after a year to regroup, Yue raised an army to recapture the emperor and return him to Luoyang. In response, Yang freed Ying to fight against Yue. But unable to beat him in the open field, Yue called upon barbarian tribes of northern China to fight his mercy mercenaries in his army, opening the door for what would prove the downfall of the Jin Dynasty. Now equally matched, Yue offered to split the entire empire with Yang, but Yang's best general, that old bloodthirsty rascal Zhang Fang, would have none of it and kept fighting. So Yang cut off his head and sent it to Yue as a peace offering. But by 306, Yue had already taken Chang'an with his barbarian allies and wasn't about to stop. So Yang fled west and Ying attempted to Amscrade north, but he was captured and forced to commit suicide. Interestingly, his body was kept in a casket and drug around in the supply train of a local army, where important decisions were relayed to his corpse for approval, though eventually everyone got tired of this and chucked his body down a well. Yue, though, finally managed to recapture the emperor, and he moved the imperial court back to Luoyang as promised. Yong managed to retake Chang'an in the west, but he couldn't advance any further, so that he and Yue wound up in a stalemate. And then, on the 8th of January, 307, Emperor Hue died from eating poisoned wheat cakes. Not a moment too soon. 
His brother, Sima Qi, succeeded him as Emperor Huai of Jin, and as part of the ceremony, Huai ordered Yang to return to the imperial court to become Minister of the Masses. Believing he would be pardoned and that bygones were bygones, Yang agreed. But then he was killed in an ambush on the way to the capital, because screw that guy. <laughs> Prince Yue, the last man standing, had won the War of the Eight Princes. But his victory was short-lived, and within four years, he would die from the stress of constant rebellion, invasion, and court politics, probably from dysentery. <laughs> within five years, both the capitals of Chang'an and Luoyang, as well as all of northern China, would be in the hands of the barbarian tribes he had used to fight in the wars. In winning their victory, the Jin Dynasty had ensured its own defeat. And that's the War of the Eight Princes. Final score, Barbarians 1, Princes negative 8. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like to try this history out for yourself, it's available now as a campaign for Total War Three Kingdoms.